Welcome back friends, my name is Shada Campbell and this is video four in our four part series, Joyful Watercolor, Finding Your Style. This lesson is a watercolor self-portrait. Small choices, big style. So we've talked a lot in the other videos about acknowledging and recognizing the choices that we make, whether it's in our doodles or our techniques or our brushwork. Today, we're going to think about our choices as an artist as we create a self-portrait. And as I said in the very first video, we're gonna get you on the fast track to understanding your unique artistic voice. So let's paint a self-portrait. Okay, supplies, what are we using? I have my Strathmore Visual Journal. This is 140 pound watercolor paper. It's great for wet media. I'm gonna do my practice work in there today. And then I have my other Strathmore. This is like a hardcover little watercolor sketch pad. And that's where I'm gonna do my finished portrait. But any watercolor paper will do for this. Now I'm going to do my practice pieces in a single color. So I've got that black tube of paint from Daler Rowney. And then for my finished piece, I'll do a colorful portrait. So I have the Aquafine travel set here. Uh, a couple brushes. I'm just using my number eight, number four round brush. Even if you wanna go even smaller to a number one or two, that's good. Grab a palette and a glass of clean water, some paper towel for blotting your brush. And we're ready to get started. We'll begin by mixing up our black paint, just like we did in video lesson one, where we created those kitchen doodles or any kind of doodles. We're working in a single color. So I'm taking my large round brush and I'm adding lots of water to my black paint. The more water I add, the lighter and more transparent my paint will be. So I've got a, a few blacks on the palette here. And uh, that's really all I need to do to get ready to create a few portrait doodles, some practice doodles. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how to draw a face just in general. This is your rule of thumb. You're going to create the face shape, whether it's an oval or a circle or a square, or whatever. And then we'll place those ears. They're usually about halfway down there, there's the ears are actually centered on a on a head, on a human head. And then the eyes are in line with those ears and the nose, of course, just below, and then you've got your mouth. So that's your sort of general rule for um, how the face is laid out, and knowing that will set you up for success. You can change the shapes of things without you know, putting the ears and eyes in the completely wrong spot. Today I'm painting my own self-portrait, and if I look at a photo of myself, I can see I've got a fairly round face, short blonde hair, blue eyes, and a small mouth, thin lips. So knowing that, okay, those are my main features. Now I want to create a bunch of doodles of me, of moi, and for each one I'm going to challenge myself to illustrate or paint things in a different way. There's a million and one ways to draw or paint eyes, and I wanna try at least three or four. <laughs> so that's what I'm challenging you to do as well. Now to begin, I'm starting with my first little portrait doodle here, and I'm using a very transparent, very light black paint to kind of work out a round face shape and neck. And I'm putting my two little ears there about halfway down. You can see I've kind of left uh, my, my hair <laughs> blank and then I'm using just a little bit of a darker paint on the tip of my brush and kind of just drawing the hair in. The blonde hair is a little bit tricky because I want it to look light but I, I just put the wispy hairs there and then I must them up with water a little bit. Let's leave the hair alone for now. <laughs> I'm going to take a darker more opaque black and for this very first one I'm keeping things simple. My eyes are barely more than dots. I'm gonna do just those two little dots for the nostrils of the nose and a little line for the mouth. From there, I might take a slightly darker paint and add some shading like under my chin and on my cheeks and maybe a few more wispy hairs, those kinds of little details. But for the most part, I've kept it really simple and uh, 
you know what, I can try uh, more interesting eyes in the next one or a, a weirder, larger nose in the next portrait. So for this next one, I wanted to do a really, really wide face, like a really cutesy wide head. <laughs> and then I actually took a darker black and I painted my hair in because I thought, why don't I try the technique of lifting? So while that darker area of the hair is still wet, I took a clean, fairly dry brush and I'm just lifting, I'm pressing the bristles against the wet area and I'm able to pick up quite a bit of that color and I can still move the color around so that no harsh areas form. And you can see I got this very soft gray area and then I could add some wispy bits back in. So just trying different things, right? This is all about experimenting. Try to free yourself up to do a bad job. I think that's one of the hardest things is that so many of us, we just want to do good work. You don't want to do bad work when you sit down to paint. You want it to look pretty. You want it to look nice. But how do we ever learn if all we ever want to paint is things that we're good at? So that's something I struggle with myself. Uh, Honestly, painting people is out of my comfort zone, but I have so much fun because there's so much material there. When you go to paint a person, you get to choose. How do I want to paint cheeks and eyes and a nose and hair? There's all these wonderful choices and there's this wonderful subject matter to play with and to get creative with. And so I encourage you to do the same and don't worry if one or two or all of the self-portraits that you practice on today don't don't turn out quite the way you imagined. I've got two to begin here and I want to try a third. Now this one, instead of working out the face uh, with a very light paint, I'm going to treat my paintbrush more like a pen and I'm kind of just sketching. So I'm working out the face shape, working out the wispy hair just the way I would as if I were sketching in pencil or with marker. Since this is basically just a line drawing, I thought I'll try a more intricate eye. I began with two arches, added some lashes, and then a light black circle for each iris. I'll do the pupils later. And I know from video one when I did all those other doodles that I really do love to muss up my watercolors. Even though this is a nice line drawing and it could be left alone, I like to give that watery look. So I'm going to take a damp brush and kind of uh, add a little shading to the hair and, and whatnot. So think back to what we did in video one and the things you liked about your illustrations in that lesson. And you can incorporate some of those things now. So this is all about getting to know yourself. Remember, this is all about making uh, new choices and trying new things and then recognizing which um, style you are most most drawn to. I tried this larger nose. I, I really like my little two nostril noses. That's a go-to for me, but this one was totally fine. And uh, now that this is beginning to dry, I can add the pupils to the eyes. I'll add a little neck. And this one's totally different than the first two that I did, but I like it. And it's teaching me about um, things that I do like and things that I don't. I'm not really into that nose. <laughs> All right, I have room for one more. Let's try one more doodle portrait together. This one, even though I have a round face, I'm going to try doing a very long portrait and I'll still keep the base of this head quite round <laughs> in an attempt to capture um, one of my main features, which is I think I have quite a round face. Uh, adding my ears and neck and just did everything in a very, very light color. And then I liked uh, portrait number two here, the lifting, the way it gave this very soft quality to the hair. So let's try it again. I am using this nice dark, rich, uh, semi-opaque black to um, paint my little pixie cut here. <laughs> and then uh, while it is still wet, I'm going to take a 
clean, damp brush, and I am picking up the paint. So for lifting, you're always going back to the paper towel and get rid of the excess paint that you paint that you pick up, then come back to the paper, pick up some more paint, blot on the paper towel, and in that way you just erase little by little and you get this nice, uh, very soft sort of area that I think is great for clouds, great for adding highlights on water or flower petals or whatever you might be painting. Uh, I, I tried doing larger eyes for this self-portrait and then I, I was stuck on my little nostril tiny nostril nose <laughs> went back to that uh, added a little lash that's something I like I, I and then I did this sort of creepy mouth <laughs> I don't know when you're experimenting it's not always excellent or it's not always something that you're like oh yeah but hey that's how we are learning what we don't like. It's just as important to learn what you don't like. So that one had some features I did like, like the hair and some that I didn't like the large dark eyes were sort of creepy and the long mouth, a little creepy also, but what do I like? I like the little nostrils. I like the rosy cheeks. I like the must up watery hair. So those are all things we're gonna bring with us as we paint a final self portrait in color. So speaking of color, let's pull out our pan watercolor set and mix up our colors for the portrait. I'm using my number eight round brush, a little larger brush for mixing is always nice. And um, I'm going to begin by wetting that peach pink cake of paint and bringing the pigment over to the palette where I can mix in other colors. And in fact, I have very pale skin, so I am going to mix a little white in there. Again, scrubbing the cake of white paint I pick up the pigment and I can mix it with the peach pink on the palette and kind of get my perfect color going. Then I'll rinse my brush and I'm going to mix uh, a yellow color for my blonde hair. So let's grab a little bit of yellow here and then I want to add a lot of white to it because I have quite white blonde hair. That might even just be a little too white now seeing it on the palette. So I'm going to rinse my brush again and grab some yellow ochre. So I'll uh, bring that over to the palette here. And I think what I'm gonna end up doing is a mix of white and yellow ochre to give me this nice sort of very light buttery golden yellow. And that's a good start for my skin and hair. So mix up the colors that you think you're gonna wanna use. You might want some darker uh, skin tone, whatever skin tone you're using. I'm also going to mix a more concentrated peach pink here. I could even put a little uh, red in or pink because I'll, I'll want a darker color for shading or for rosy cheeks, that kind of thing. Okay, let's begin. As I mentioned at the start of the lesson, I am working in my other little Strathmore uh, watercolor sketch pad here. And I'm going to start this painting with the hair. So I have this uh, mix of yellow ochre and white, this is giving me this golden buttery yellow. And I am going to use my number eight round brush and I'm going to do large brush strokes, kind of pulling the brush across the paper and I just want to work out the shape of my little pixie cut. And that's the nice thing about watercolor paints. You've got time while they're wet that you can move them around a little without those harsh edges forming. And that pretty much looks like the shape that I need. I can lift a little because I like the softness that lifting gives me and my hair is quite light. It's sort of a white blonde, so I don't want it to look too golden and lifting is going to help me um, give that, that lighter, bright white blonde look. Then I'm going to take that peachy color I mixed up and Again, using the larger number eight round brush, I'm working out my round face shape um, and just kind of allowing it to touch the hair ever so slightly, but also leaving a bit of space there because I really don't want to get any blending between skin and hair. That's probably not the time for wet <laughs> into wet or having those colors touch. I'll work out the shape of a neck here. This is all very perfectly imperfect, I wanna say. This is still a very doodly sort of self-portrait. It's just kind of for fun. Like, what do I look like if I try to capture a couple of my key features without being too serious about it? 
And then while this paint is wet, I, I took a more concentrated peach or a peach with like a little bit of red mixed in to darken it. And I, I did a little bit of shading across the top of the neck, underneath the chin and along the hairline. I also took some darker yellow ochre and did some wispy uh, brush strokes where the hair might be a little darker, like near the ears or near the part. So just adding a little bit of shading detail to the skin and the hair while I can get a bit of a wet into wet effect and get these really soft lines. That's the base layer of my skin and hair done. And I need that to dry now before I add anything else. So I mixed a light blue. This is just a mix of cobalt and white with lots of water. And I just thought, why don't I sort of add um, a top to my portrait here? I could be wearing something after all. And you don't have to get very detailed with this. You can just kind of work out the shape of your shoulders. You know, basically it's just this, <laughs> this blue area below my neck. You could do any color, obviously. And then again, we need to let that dry because what we want to do is get quite precise and work a little wet on dry. So I'm mixing up a darker yellow ochre to add detail to my hair. I'm mixing a slightly darker peach so that I might add some shading and uh, some rosy cheeks. And then you can see now that my portrait has dried, I am able to be very, very precise. And I'm actually, I've actually switched to a quite a small brush. This is the number two round brush and I can add you know, just silly details like a little collar and buttons on my shirt. And of course, I am using a damp brush now to muss that up a little bit since that is one of the <laughs> style choices that I tend to go back to. And now that I know my hair and skin are dry, I can take a darker uh, yellow ochre here on that number two round brush and I'm just adding a little bit of shading, a few wispy brush strokes and lines to the hair and I'll probably mess it up a little um, so that nothing is too sharp. I like that sort of soft focus look. <laughs> And I'm also working the wet on dry technique to add shading using a darker peach to um, put some shading under my chin on my neck. And then I'm adding some little rosy cheeks here as well. I am also going to just paint like a very small little heart shaped mouth using red. This is getting a little doll like maybe, but <laughs> these are the choices I'm rolling with today. Remember, this is just practice. And then finally, I've got a little bit of black paint on the end of my brush here and I'm going to um, paint the eyes. And I really liked the eyes in the um, second doodle practice that I did. So I sort of started with a, two horizontal lines and then just add these messy little lashes on the outer edges. For the nose, I stuck with the uh, two tiny nostrils. That was definitely my favorite nose. And I'm just going to finish up my little self-portrait now by working a little bit more wet on dry and adding some, some low lights. So a little bit of that darker yellow ochre. I think I mixed a little bit of brown in there and um, maybe a few more low lights with a darker peach where my uh, neck meets my blouse or on the sides of my face where there would just naturally be a little bit of shadow underneath my hair, that kind of thing. So play around and just see what you come up with as you finish your watercolor self-portrait. I hope you enjoyed doing this as much as I did. This was a lot of fun and I got out of my comfort zone here too. Remember getting out of your comfort zone, experimenting, trying things in different ways and really taking stock of what you like and what you don't like. That's how you find your artistic voice and build your own unique style. Well guys, that brings our four part watercolor series to a close. This was Joyful Watercolor, Finding Your Style. And I really hope that you do feel that you've kind of begun to understand who you are as an artist. I know that's a big task, but I do think it's possible. And I know how frustrating it can be. There's so much media now. You're watching other artists on YouTube and Instagram. It can feel like you're always copying, but I think by honing in on the choices you make and really just 
thinking a little bit about how you like to present the world, you can get on that fast track to understanding your artistic voice. And I hope that you're really excited about watercolor painting and feeling like a kid again, basically. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Campbell. Come and say hi and paint along with me anytime.